building a new modern .NET web application and want to leverage AWS, this video is for you. It is the part of a series about building modern web application with .NET and AWS in 2024. In this video, I'll explain to you how to architect a modern .NET web application leveraging AWS. Hi, I'm François Boutourich, I'm a .NET developer for the past 20 years and I love .NET. I work at Amazon Web Services and help .NET developers to make the best use of AWS services breadth and depth. Architecting a modern .NET web application on AWS can be quite a challenge because of the breadth of AWS services. There is no such thing as a universal architecture that would be suitable for every problem you try to solve. So in this video, let's narrow down the problem to nine key requirements. You want the application to expose secured API endpoints so that you will be able to provide a mobile application or integration with third parties in the future. You want to use the single page application model to offload your backend of processing UI updates and events while providing an interactive experience to your user. You want a loosely coupled architecture so your whole application won't fail if one part fails. You want the application to be observable to understand what's going on. You want it to be scalable because you don't necessarily know how successful your application will be. Scale down to zero if there is no usage and scale up as the traffic comes in. You want it reliable. There is nothing worse for the user experience than an unavailable application. As you don't know how successful your application will be, you want to pay based on usage. You also want reduced operations since you have no operation team. And if your application is successful, your requirements may evolve, so you want to preserve your application mobility and you don't want to stick to a service. That's a good list of requirements when you build a brand new application. In addition to those requirements, you have strong c -sharp skills and low JavaScript skills. So let's take these requirements and see how to architect such a modern web application with .NET and AWS. Keep in mind that the architecture I present here is opinionated. This is my go-to architecture when I start a new project with .NET and AWS. You still have to assess if it fits your requirements. So in a previous video of the theory, I've discussed the difference between Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Web Apps. You can refer to this video to learn more about Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Web Apps. As you want to build a single page application and offload your backend from processing UI updates and UI events, the mainstream choice would be to pick one of the popular JavaScript or TypeScript frontend framework like Angular, React, or Vue.js. However, as I do, you have little skills with JavaScript. So I recommend you to pick Blazor WebAssembly you will be able to build a modern single-page application while leveraging your strong c -sharp skills. For the backend API part, of course, you will use ISP.NET Core. To get the best performance, I would recommend to use ISP.NET Core minimal API with native ahead-of-time compilation. Thanks to native ahead-of-time compilation, your application is compiled to binary you get native performance. That's it for the software component. Now, let's discuss how you can host them on AWS. Let's start with your single page application. Like for an Angular, React, or Vue.js single page application, you can serve your Blazor WebAssembly application as static assets. A robust while cheap way to do so is to host the HTML, CSS, binary, and assets file on, of your Blazor WebAssembly in an Amazon S3 bucket, then you can configure an Amazon CloudFront distribution to get an URL endpoint and serve your application. For your backend, as you're building a NiceBay.NET Core minimal API with native ahead-of-time compilation, you can deploy it on AWS Lambda 
and serve it through API Gateway. The native ahead of time compilation reduces the cold start to the bare minimum. As your ISP.NET Core minimal API is turned into a binary, you, go, you don't get the cold start penalty for bootstrapping the .NET runtime and compiling just in time your intermediate language code. To enable your ISP.NET Core minimal API with native ahead of time compilation to run on AWS Lambda, you have only three simple steps to follow. Add the Amazon.lambda.isp.net core.hosting NuGet package to your project. Call the AWS Lambda hosting extension method to add the required services to configure dependency injection. And add API Gateway proxy request and API Gateway proxy response to your AppJSON serializer context. The good part is that it won't affect your application if you don't run your app on AWS Lambda. You can still run the exact same application on your local machine, on Linux web server, or in a container with no changes. For the database, you can leverage Entity Framework and Amazon Aurora Serverless V2 with PostgreSQL or MySQL. Leveraging PostgreSQL or MySQL as your database, you build no stickiness to a specific database service using open source databases. In your requirements, we said you want secured API endpoint, so you need to add authentication and authorization to your application. In 2024, you don't want to build your own authentication service, except if this is the value you want to deliver. Here, you can rely on Amazon Cognito, its hosted web UI, and its auth 2.0 and OpenID Connect endpoint. Let's discuss the explicit monthly uptime service level agreement of this architecture. All the services we are leveraging are here are designed to be resilient and scalable. CloudFront has a monthly uptime service level agreement of 99.9%. Amazon S3 has a monthly uptime SLA of 99.9% as well. Amazon Happy Eye Gateway has a 99.95% monthly uptime SLA. AWS Lambda has also a 99.95% monthly uptime SLA. Amazon Aurora Serverless V2 has a 99.9% monthly uptime SLA for a single availability zone deployment. Amazon Cognito SLA is 99.9%. The simple way to calculate the composite monthly uptime service level agreement of this infrastructure is to multiply each uptime probability together to get the overall uptime probability. I've done the math for you and it gives a probability of system uptime of 0 0.995. The composite monthly uptime service level agreement of this architecture is then 99.5%. So you get a pretty good composite SLA without much engineering effort. Of course, by adding more engineering effort, you can improve this composite SLA, but you have to assess if it is worth the effort. Of course, this is not your customer facing service level agreement. You have to integrate your own downtime to, for example, to deploy and update your application, or fix failures, because as our CTO Werner Vogel says, everything fails all the time. What about loosely coupling? If you need to process the data sent by your user, for example, process an online order, you don't want them to wait until you have fully processed the order. You want to quickly return and process the data in the background. To do so, you can leverage Amazon Simple Queue service, Amazon SQS, to send a message to the queue with the data to process. Then, an AWS Lambda function is triggered and will process your data. To minimize adherence between your application and Amazon SQS, you can leverage well-known messaging framework in the .NET community like Mass Transit or End Service Bus that both support Amazon SQS. We have our own lightweight AWS messaging processing framework for .NET if you prefer. You'll find the different links to those framework in the description. Regarding the Lambda function triggered to process the data, 
Be sure to isolate your business logic from the AWS Lambda boilerplate code to minimize the adverts. A good way to do so is to use the AWS Lambda annotation framework for .NET. You just have to decorate your c -sharp method with specific attributes and a source generator will automatically generate the Lambda boilerplate code for you at compile time. To make your application observable, I highly recommend you to rely on open telemetry. It guarantees you that you are not sticky to the platform you are using for observability. On AWS, you leverage the AWS distro for OpenTelemetry.NET SDK. The link to the documentation on how to configure it is in the description. That's it! You have a starting point for architecting your modern .NET web application on AWS, fulfilling your initial requirements. As any architecture, it will evolve as your requirements evolve. So in this video, we've seen how to architect a modern web application with .NET and AWS. Of course, this video is recording in 2024 and things evolve. If you live in the future, you may want to revisit my opinionated architecture. If your requirements evolve over time, you can learn more on other deployment options on the AWS.NET Developer Center at the link in the description. Stay tuned, there are more .NET videos coming in this series, so be sure to like this video and subscribe to the AWS Developer YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.